Welcome to this service celebrating the lives of Shirley Trent and Herb Trent. My name is Meg Ilman White, and I'm the minister here at Knox United Church in Kenora. Shirley was a long-term treasured member of Knox. She was involved with the UCW and enjoyed that work perhaps the very best. Always she was a joyful and welcoming presence. My fondest memory of Shirley is her smile, her ready greeting as she came into the Knox kitchen and rolled up her sleeves and got ready to prepare for coffee time. As no at Knox, we come into worship every week to light the Christ candle, symbol of the truth that we share. Christ is in our midst. Christ is with us in our deepest sadness and our greatest joy, even when we're far from one another, even when we're separated as we are here, separated from family and friends by a pandemic. Still, Christ is with us, bonding us through all time and space, bonding us through our sharing of stories, and you will hear a lot of stories in the time ahead in this service. So let us come now into silence as Joan Lapworth, one of Shirley's friends in the UCW, lights the Christ candle for us. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we gather in your presence to celebrate Shirley and Herb and their long and devoted life together. We give thanks to you for their lives and for the joy they gave and received. We give you thanks for this opportunity, even though we can't come together, even though we can't be here in person to hear stories shared by loved ones and to remember them with love. Your spirit always binding us together through time and space. Draw us now into your presence as we gather in your love to remember Shirley and her. Amen. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in the celebration of life for Shirley and Herb Trent, my mom and dad. I would like to thank everyone for their kind words and support as our family went through a very emotional time last fall. Thanks to all the doctors, nurses, and caregivers at both Lake of the Woods District Hospital and Pinecrest Home for the Aged. Your care for mom and dad did not go unnoticed, and thank you. I remember mom for her kindness, generosity, and her big heart. Whenever friends and family came for a visit, mom was the one who put out the food, made the drinks, and made everyone feel so comfortable. We would all have a great time visiting and reminiscing and as always mum would be right in the middle telling stories of times from the past and the and the future. She was a wealth of knowledge when it came to family. She loved it when company came to visit. She was at her very best at making everyone feel welcomed. Dad being a railroader and mum a correctional officer, they were good providers for our family. We never wanted for anything except maybe more of their time. Dad always had everything ready for us to go in the small boat whenever anyone wanted to head out on down the creek or out on the lake. He always found time to make sure it was ready for us to take out. Dad also loved his large garden. It kept him busy when he wasn't working throughout the summer and into the fall. He was very protective of that garden. You could never sneak a tomato without him knowing about it. He always had his prized tomatoes, which he watched over very carefully. So between mum and dad's gardening, mum's farm cooking, we were always well fed with fresh vegetables from that garden. Great meals were had around the kitchen table or in the porch, one of our favorite places to gather in the summer and to have those meals. It was one of mum and dad's favorite places to snooze as well all summer long. Mum, when she wasn't volunteering or helping out at the church, loved going to Briar Bonspiels across Canada with her longtime favorite friends. 
I was lucky enough to join her on a few, and boy, did those ladies know how to dress it up and have a good time. Many laughs were had on those trips, I'll tell you. Dad, in his retirement, loved to walk. I am sure that the Kenora Kuwaitan communities are wondering where Herb Trent is these days. So when someone asks, have you seen Herb around, just say he's still walking, but in a different place now. Dad also enjoyed his coffee time with his old friends. It was nice to see him keeping connected, but losing friends and COVID really took a toll on him. He missed them a lot. Mom and Dad found curling and golf after retirement, spending many hours with their good friends, enjoying each other's company. They are back in good company now with many old friends and family that they have lost and missed so much. My family loves coming to Kenora and we, and we have a lot of special memories of spending countless hours with Grandma and Grandpa in the porch or at the beach. One thing is for sure, visiting Kenora will not be the same without them. Mom and Dad were always so good to us all. I was fortunate enough to see Mom and Dad last summer, and I feel blessed that I did. I never thought I would be saying goodbye to both Mom and Dad in a short period of time, but life throws us curveballs, and this one just happens to be one of them. It was tough on the family when they passed so close together, but I think it was better it happened that way for the both of them. Go in peace, Mom and Dad, and may your next journey be as good as your last. I love you both. I will miss you every day. You are now with all the other angels watching over us all. I have put together some pictures of their lives well spent. We will miss you, Mom and Dad. Please enjoy the PowerPoint. Please also stay healthy and stay safe, everyone. Thanks. Love be 
your friends for the night. My name is Ashley Trent and this is my sister Jessica. We are Herb and Shirley Trent's eldest granddaughters. We are? <laughs> yes, we are. And we belong to the youngest of Shirley and Herb's five children, Danny. Um, so in perfect circumstances, we would all be in person and be able to uh, celebrate Herb and Shirley's life in person. But given the global pandemic, we aren't able to do that, so we've put together a eulogy for both Grandpa and Grandma Trent um, just to celebrate their life. So Jess is going to start with... With Grandma's? With Grandma's. Can you start with Grandma's because I'm going to ball and then have to hang up. Okay, so then I will, I will start with Grandpa's. So Grandma Trent wasn't one to tolerate much noise, foolishness, or waste. I always remember tiptoeing around when I was little and perhaps admittedly as an adult too. He was a very serious man who worked hard to provide for his family and ensure the generations that came after him were able to stand firmly on their two feet. 
Grandpa values quiet, solitude, and producing his own food. Spending time with him in the garden is still one of my fondest memories. I remember the great pumpkin he grew and having the newspaper stop in to take a picture when I was little. He was so proud of that thing, and when the journalist asked Grandpa to be in the picture with it, he said, to hell with that, let's put the grandparents in there. And I know each and every one of my um, aunts and uncles and um, cousins would be able to hear how he would say that. I remember going out and picking potato bugs off the potato plants with him too. Yeah. He'd give me like a sour cream, plastic sour, empty sour cream container and I'd go pick potato bugs with him in the backyard. <laughs> that was always our job. Um, so yeah, so what we loved most about him is how he stoically loved our family. He wasn't met much to fawn or gush. However, he always took interest in our schooling and career pursuits uh, and often expressed how worried he was about me driving to remote communities. Again, anyone that knows me knows that I don't exactly have a clean driving record. So uh, grandpa would often say, make sure you have good tires on that vehicle of yours and ensure that I had boots and warm clothes in the back too, because you just never know. Uh, grandpa was always one to prepare for any crisis that could happen. I think one of my favorite memories of both grandpa and grandma were on my birthdays. Grandma would always call you cheap and would sneak a hundred dollar bill into my back pocket as she whispered, don't tell your grandfather, you know how he gets. And then just minutes later, grandpa would pull me aside and sneak another hundred dollar bill into my hand and say, just don't say anything to grandma. I always kind of wondered if you both had this, you know, thing going on where you'd like to trick us, but it was always a really special way to celebrate our birthdays. And of course, we were spoiled by both grandma and grandpa always. Uh, we didn't get to properly say goodbye to our grandpa because of the pandemic, so I'd like to take a moment to do so now. Grandpa Trent, thank you for inspiring my green thumb and passion for gardening. I always felt proud bringing you homemade soups, goulashes, and things for my garden after you gave yours up. Your eyes always twinkled with pride and surprised that I could yield a good harvest on my own. Thank you for watching my kiddos after school while I worked in their earlier years. I know it tested your patience, but I also know you loved preparing them a big feast of after school snacks for them to devour when they got off the bus. I'm grateful you got to know my children and were able to watch them grow into adolescence. Knowing your great grandparents is a privilege not many get to enjoy. If you were here, you'd hold up your hand and say, yeah, yeah, yeah hinting for me to stop rambling. So we'll just leave it at that. I hope you know how much your grandchildren and great grandchildren loved you and always will. We always saw past the crust and knew you were just really a big stoic softy on the inside. Rest peacefully, Grandpa Herb, we love you. So now I have one for grandma. Um, we wrote these sitting down together and so we're reading off of our screen. So sorry about that, but this one is uh, for Grandma Trent. Grandma, also known as Big Cheryl, passed away on August 30th, 2020, surrounded by her family who loved her and who she loved the most. It's hard to write a memoir of Grandma because she was the most dynamic person I've ever known. A lover of travel, golf, curling, gardening, her dogs, the lake, the arts, and most of all, her family. I think everyone in our family felt close to her, which is an incredible feat considering how many of us there, there are. She always made an effort to spend time with all of us. Whether it was trips to A&W with the coffee crew, sneaking $100 birthday bills into our pockets, back rubs on the couch, fries and gravy at the curling rink, or babysitting sleepovers while her railroading sons were at work, grandma was always with her grandkids. Uh, she took Geef and I on our first trip out to Edmonton, our first flight ever, a memory that we still talk and laugh about all the time. Grandma always took care of her family and was still busy taking care of all the babies at Pinecrest right up until the day she passed. We all have our own special memories of Grandma. Big Cheryl was not only a matriarch in our family, but she was an active and cherished member of our community. I remember making my regular stop at the Lion Club's booth at the mall to visit Grandma selling pull tickets, checking in on her volunteering at the hospital gift shop, helping her make desserts and mini sandwiches for the Knox United fur funerals. Those were so good. <laughs> and going to the Symphony Orchestra charity concerts under the big tent. 
As a jail guard for many years, she often would have clients approach her on the street downtown. She'd never turn them away. In fact, she would invite them for lunch or offer to buy them a sandwich. <laughs> Grandma's nurturing knew no limits, and she taught all of us to love the same way. Grandma shared her love of the farm and all of our Nipua Hawken family with us, instilling an adoration of our extended family that will be passed on for generations to come. She was the honing beacon for our family, truly, organizing all our holiday gatherings and reunions and always encouraging us to learn about our family history. I long to hear the stories of our family's heritage one last time from her and see her pull out that giant family tree she had tucked in the spare bedroom. I'll always remember grandma every time I make Molly a vanilla ice cream cone dipped in Nesquik, eat strawberries with sour cream and brown sugar, or craft dinner with stewed tomatoes or celery and onion, her special beets and fresh cut tomatoes and cucumbers from the garden sprinkled with salt. Unfortunately, I'll have to wait until I join her in the afterlife to taste her cream corn again because nobody can recreate grandma's cream corn. I love you, Grandma. Have fun up there with Uncle Roy, Uncle Elmer, Uncle Doug, Auntie Ruth, and of course, Chicklet. Grandpa, you have your full, your hands full once again with that game. Thank you for being our grandma, our mom, our aunt, our sister, our wife, our friend. We love you, Grandma and Grandpa. He gives me new strength. 
He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all the enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and your house will be my home as long as I live. Listening to the familiar words of Psalm 23, we hear encouragement for the path of grief. We know that the day will come when we will say goodbye one last time to those who brought us into this world. But when parents die, no matter how prepared we are, we find that we are not ready. There is so much about Shirley and Herb that created a sense of home for family and also for friends. Home is the familiar, the daily routines and rituals that signal to others that all is well with the world. One example of this is Herb's regular daily walks with his spry step and his regular routine and route. This was a sign to neighbors who came to look for him and wait to see if he would appear on that day. Herb was a serious, steady, and devoted man. He was the tender, smiling grandpa that could gaze at a baby as if he or she were the only human that mattered in that moment. As I flipped through pictures of Herb, one thing stood out to me, and that was his incredible smile. That same smile that was there on his wedding day, a smile that sparkled and spoke of adventure, an adventure he was perhaps just waiting for in his life with Shirley. They had that. And Shirley, independent and determined, a correctional officer for 25 years at the Kenora Jail. That's not easy work, especially for someone who had such a generous heart. Beyond work was family and gatherings and food carefully prepared from garden produce. It was warm and joyous. And beyond family was adventure and fun curling bond spiels, and golf, a woman who loved sport and the outdoors. And then let's not forget those constant companions of hers, her dogs and her cat. There is so much of Herb and Shirley in each of you. Embrace that. Hold that close. Remember that. Smile when you notice it in yourself or in one another. Share your stories with one another and don't be afraid to feel the sadness of this loss because it will be there. But in feeling the sadness, you will also open yourself to the joy of the memory. In the shadow of sadness, we hear a promise in the words of the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Like a diligent shepherd, God walks with us in grief, in sadness and in loss, and creates tables of welcome, tables of goodness and mercy, of blessing and of joy. Thanks be to God. Hello, uh, my name is Mel Warding, and my wife's name is Joyce. I was honored when Kelly asked me if I would say a few words today. Our friendship with the Trents goes back a long way. I first met her when he transferred to Kenora from Brandon with the CPR. We really got to know her and Shirley when Florence and Ian Cameron rented a colored TV to watch 
the Super Bowl game. At that time, the Camerons and Trents were neighbors on 9th Avenue. It started a great friendship with Herb, Herb and Shirley, Camerons, Wilsons, Mortons, and later with Ronovics, Lowe's, Wolfrains, and the Browns. We celebrated everything. New Year's Eve at the Legion, New Year's brunch at Beckett's, and that was always great. Uh, next morning, great cup games. We had great time, great boat trips. Herb and I did a lot of fishing together, and, and later, uh, and lots of times, trips to Wilson's camp. Masonic banquets, many happy hours. I'd likely miss some. <laughs> Herb, Herb and I always attended Masonic meetings together. Seven of us men always went out for lunch and beer on our birthdays. In later years, it was just Herb and I left. In 2019, we had lunch at the log cabin. That was our last lunch together. Young Herb and Terry also happened to be there. That was our last birthday lunch as the virus prevented it last year. We were waiting to go, but uh, we just didn't make it. Shirley and I sold Nevada tickets for the, for the hospital in the mall. For the, and that was run by the retire, retired railroaders and we raised a lot of money for the hospital. We also had fun with, and many laughs. Shirley and several other women traveled to Hinton, Alberta, to Curl, and then enjoy many other bonds fields in Kenora, Dryden, and Falcon Lake. I should mention that on one trip west, <coughs> Herb and I were in the bunkhouse and Larry Wald was making his last trip, so Herb and I took him to lunch. Our times together were always enjoyable and Herb and Shirley helped make it that way. They were going to be missed. My mom and dad were always there for us. We had a great childhood, although you never know it when you're young. Mom took us to Coney Island on the Argyle for swimming lessons every summer. Then, when, then we went to the farm to visit with our cousins for a few weeks. Our house was always busy because there were five children. Mom and Dad's neighbors and friends on 9th Avenue South and 2nd Street were all great and they were always there for each other. They both were wonderful parents and a large part of my life. I miss you, Mom and Dad, and always will. Let us pray. Creator God, you lead us by still waters, and you are comfort in our sadness and loss. We give thanks for your presence with us and for your strength in trouble. In shared memory, you bind us, sister to brother, brother to brother, sister to sister child to parent, friend to friend. We give thanks for Shirley, who welcomed and created family feasts, who enjoyed friends and family and adventure, and taking her turn in Knox house groups, always in the kitchen preparing with daughter Kelly and great-granddaughter Peyton. We remember with gratitude her interest in others, her cheerfulness, and her enjoyment of friends and family. And we give thanks for her with his ready and distinctive smile, his devotion to family and longtime friends. So many memories of his long walks, lunches with buddies, time curling, time in his garden. We give thanks for the stories and celebrations we've heard today and for the many ways that Her Shirley and Herb have blessed loved ones and community. 
We pray now for all who knew and loved them, especially for their children, Herb, Terry, Kelly, Tannis, and Danny, and for their children-in-law, Val, Lise, Ken, George, and Pat, and for all of their grandchildren, for Herb's sisters, and all of their nieces and nephews, friends and neighbors. They will be so deeply missed. And yet we give thanks that when we come together, we can share stories and laughter and tears and memory. For nothing that you have given us in this life is truly lost, but lives on in each of us, in our memory, and in our loving. All these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught his friends to pray in this way. continue to grieve surely in Herb's deaths, you will cherish the tenderness the memories shared and the knowledge that they are held in the everlasting arms of love. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. And thanks be to God. 